All right, let's focus in the abdominal cavity as we move into the digestive system. Right here, beneath the diaphragm, we have the largest organ in the pig's abdominal cavity. You can see it's a grayish, brownish color. I'm touching it here, I'm touching it here, I'm touching it here. This is the pig's liver. In humans, the liver is four lobes or four parts. In the fetal pig, the liver is five lobes or five parts, although they are kind of difficult to find. When I lift up the liver, and I'm focusing on the right side of the pig here, I find a piece of tissue that to me often looks like a piece of bubble gum that's been chewed. In some pigs, it might be green because of what it's filled with. However, in this pig, it has more of a pink color. Right beneath the liver here, this is the gallbladder, the organ that is responsible for storing bile produced by the liver. So the liver makes the bile, the gallbladder stores the bile, and then if we follow the gallbladder towards the back of the pig, I can see it kind of has this duct to it, this pathway. Oh, you can see it really well right there. This is what we call the common bile duct. And this duct from the gallbladder and the liver and also the pancreas kind of goes into it as well, carries bile down into our small intestines from the gallbladder because that's where bile does its job of breaking down fats and foods. On the left-hand side of the fetal pig, beneath the liver, if I lift it up, I found this pouch right here and it's empty. There's not really anything in it. Well, that's because this pouch is the stomach. And the reason it's empty is our fetal pig hasn't eaten anything yet. It maybe drank some amniotic fluid, so I can feel maybe some fluid inside the stomach right now. But this organ is stomach right there. There's some interesting anatomy inside the stomach. So we are gonna take a scalpel and never putting my finger beneath the stomach, I'm gonna try and just cut like a two inch cut into the stomach. Just through one side, one wall. I don't wanna cut all the way through. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna clean it out a bit and I'll show you what we have on the inside. So if I take that stomach now that I have a cut and I flip it open, we're gonna see some digested food and it's not food, I should be more clear about that. Some digested amniotic fluid and anything else that the fetal pig was uh, swallowing inside the amniotic fluid, maybe some of its hair that had shed. But I see that the wall of the stomach is not smooth. It's got all these folds in it. These folds are called rugae. And rugae exist in the stomach to increase its stretching ability so that if the pig or a person has a really large meal, the stomach is able to stretch and increase its capacity. It also increases the surface area of the stomach for any absorption that occurs inside the stomach. A lot of water and medicines and alcohol get absorbed inside the stomach. So the rugae help to increase the stomach's surface area. The next portion of the digestive tract that you can see that comes after the stomach is the small intestine. And it's not called the small intestine because it is short. It's incredibly long, almost 20 feet in people. It's called the small intestine because it is very narrow. Now your stomach needs ample time to digest food. We don't want food to enter the stomach and then immediately flow into the small intestines. So to control when food passes from the stomach to the small intestines, you're going to find this very hard, almost like a gumball structure right at the end of the stomach towards midline. And it's right where the stomach transitions into small intestine right here. This structure right here is known as the pyloric sphincter. It's a round sphincter muscles, muscle that contracts and relaxes to control when food is able to empty from the stomach into the small intestine. And just to be clear, when food leaves the stomach and goes into the small intestine, it's actually not called food anymore at this point. At this point, we call it chyme. So the pyloric sphincter controls that release of chyme into the small intestine. You can choose to cut open the pyloric sphincter with a scalpel to feel what it's like on the inside, or you can just feel the pyloric sphincter to feel how tough this contracted muscle is. Just like we cut open the stomach, I wanna also cut open a portion of the small intestine because it doesn't have rugae, but it has something else. So I'm gonna take the scissors and make a small snip right here in the small intestine 
And then I'm just going to make a one inch cut. There's gonna be some leakage of some partially digested amniotic fluid. Now inside the small intestine, there's going to be a, not a smooth surface, but you can see it almost looks carpeted. It's very velvety. And that's because the small intestine is lined with little finger-like, sea anemone-like projections called villi. Villi are loaded with blood vessels. So what happens is as digested food travels through the small intestines, these little finger-like projections that have blood vessels in them are able to capture the nutrients that are in our food. And those nutrients are able to pass through the villi into the blood vessels so that those nutrients can enter our bloodstream and be sent throughout our body to where they need to go. So the villi are able to greatly increase the surface area of the small intestines from just being a small surface area to having a massive surface area for absorption. If I come below the stomach on the left-hand side of the pig, I can find where the small intestine becomes a slightly wider, almost look like a bag of worms over here on the left-hand side, large intestine. The large intestine is responsible for absorbing a lot of water inside a human and a fetal pig. It also is responsible for being full of bacteria that help with the process of digestion. And the large intestine is also known as the colon. Now the large intestine continues in coils until it turns into this thick tube that runs down the back of our fetal pig right here. And this structure right here leads to the anus. This is the rectum or the last part of the large intestine. So just to recap, food comes down the esophagus into the stomach. From the stomach, it goes through the pyloric sphincter into the small intestines. From the small intestines, it passes into the large intestines and then travels down the rectum until it exits the body. Just a word for the wise, do not cut open the large intestine. The large intestine is full of fecal matter or whatever form of fecal matter a fetal pig can have. Let's find one of the trickiest organs to find. It's an accessory organ of the digestive system, meaning no food should ever enter it. It is going to be beneath our stomach. By the way, if you keep seeing this little structure right over here, this tongue looking thing, we will deal with that in a bit, but that's not what we're dealing with right now. So when I lift up my stomach on the left-hand side, I can find this blobby looking tissue right here. Let me pull my hands back and I'll get the forceps to point out for you. Like right here. Anytime you see this weird blobby, I always tell my students it almost looks like um, ground up like processed turkey that they have on Thanksgiving meal day in the school cafeteria, that's typically gland. And that structure right there that we're looking at that extends from here to here is a gland. It's also a part of our digestive system. So it's in two systems. It's in the endocrine system with all of the glands. It's also in the digestive system. This is the pancreas. It creates hormones like insulin and glucagon, and it also creates enzymes that help aid the process of digestion, and it dumps those enzymes into the small intestine. So here's the pancreas beneath the stomach. When we dissect in my classroom and we have finished cutting the pig open and we're putting it away for the day, my students always get really worried that the intestines and the organs are going to fall out. Have no fear. Those intestines and organs in the abdomen are firmly stuck in place by a special type of tissue known as mesentery. It's actually a portion of the peritoneum that we saw earlier lining the abdominal cavity. But this meshy tissue that you see here inside the intestines, this is the mesentery. And it holds these organs in place in the intestines. It's also filled with blood vessels so those nutrients can pass from the intestines directly into the bloodstream.